Well, hi there. Um, I originally thought that I might just share this week as a sort of postscript to the George Muller stories, um, the sort of spiritual secrets of George Muller. Uh, but when I thought about it, I thought actually what I really want to share is what's happened in my own heart at this time through these stories, because that's the thing that's really real to me. And um, I've read the George Muller story in various versions several times, and I read it when I was quite young. And I remember reading and thinking at the end, I remember closing the book and thinking, that is a bit crazy. Um, I remember thinking, I would never want to live like that. And what's fascinating to me, as I've read his journals, is that he said many people came to him and said, why would you want to live like this? You know, not knowing where your next meal comes from, not knowing where your money is going to come from. Um, and I didn't understand when I read it that first time that he was on an incredible spiritual journey, meeting with this soul-satisfying God, as he called him, meeting the living God, and that um, he loved living the way that he lived. And I had failed to understand that. Um, and then when I read it as well when I was younger and, and, and more recently as well, I've struggled to understand um, what he was saying about the Bible particularly when he spoke about the Bible being food for his soul, when he talked about delighting himself in the Lord. I, I struggled really to understand that. So for me, I've known the great power of the Bible, the sort of latent power that is in the book. I, I had a time many years back when uh, we went through real trials and difficulties and, um, and there was great darkness in a way at that time and it almost overwhelmed me. Um, and right at the sort of darkest point, I began to take Bible verses, one Bible verse every day, and I would just think about it. I didn't try and believe it, didn't try and understand it or analyze it. I just thought about it repeatedly through the day. And, uh, and, it, and it came like a great sort of a medicine almost to my soul and to my life and brought me up out of that darkness. So I, I knew that the Bible is powerful. I know that the Bible is powerful. I know now that the Bible is different from any other book on earth, that all the other books, think of all the millions of books in the world, um, they contain information. This one book alone contains spiritual life. Um, it contains spiritual food for man's soul and it is um, filled with the breath of God. Um, that breath that first created the earth and the worlds, um, those words that were spoken, that's contained within this book. And it has a latent power inside it, a power that's kind of hiding there. Um, and I tend to read now my, my Bible on the Bible app. So for years, Nick was saying to me, you must put the Bible app on your phone, you know. And I'm not particularly into tech and I loved my hard copy Bible and I thought, well, I'll do it sometime. And then Anita at church one Sunday morning said to me, you are missing out. You have not got the Bible on your phone. And so I thought, OK, I must do that. I'll try and do it soon. And that day on that Sunday, I lost my phone. I've never done that before. I lost it completely. No idea where it was. Um, and so we went through and we retraced my steps. And we thought, where did I go? And then we remembered that we'd gone to Chalk Farm Baptist Church in the evening. Um, and so we rang Jules and I had prayed, Lord, if you'll find my phone for me, the first thing I'm going to do is put that Bible app on it. And so we rang Jules and he, he searched around, couldn't find it. Then he looked again and he found my Bible and it was, it, 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 not my Bible, my phone. And it was inside a Bible in the church. And of course, Jules quipped away and said, well, it was hidden in the word. But actually, I felt God was really speaking to me that I needed to get the Bible onto my phone. And so when we got it back, the first thing that happened was we downloaded the Bible app onto my phone and um, and that's the way I read it. You can read all sorts of different translations. You can find everything really quickly. I love this bit. It's got this fantastic page on it. I'm hoping I can hold this up and you'll be able to see it. It shows the number of people literally live downloading this Bible app. What's incredible to me is you see that big number, 430,600 and something. Uh, sorry, that's millions, okay? Sorry, that's not thousands. So it's nearly half a billion people have downloaded just that Bible app, the Bible.com app, I think it's called, and are carrying that round in their phones. I think that's fascinating. And I think as well that our phones are so powerful in our lives. They're so wonderful for communication and everything, but they can also be so destructive, 
they can be addictive, they can be time wasting. Um, and so it's incredible to have the Bible on that. So I have the Bible app and it sits by the BBC News app and often I think, hmm, which, which button shall I press? But I know in my heart that to press the Bible app is where in the end I'll find spiritual life. So I was very interested in this thing of this soul food and the way he was, George Muller was reading the Bible. And during the lockdown, I began to pray, oh God, would you help me with this? I want to read it this way. I want to find this soul food. And I tend to read the Bible. I start at the beginning. I slowly read my way through it. And then when I finish it, I start all over again. Um, but I was reading at that point I'd got to Acts and I was in Acts 17 and I think we're going to put the um, verse up here. Actually, it was two verses um, and it was as if I pressed pause. It was as if suddenly something caught my attention and I stopped and I read these two verses and they became something so wonderful to me. I've driven Nick nearly crazy talking about them uh, because they've been like food for my soul. So this is what it said. It says... God, who made the world and everything in it. And suddenly it seemed extraordinary that he had made the world and everything in it. And at that time I was walking uh, to work and it was right at the sort of deepest part of the lockdown and there were so few people outside. And I had my NHS letter which said this person's allowed to go around Islington. And I would be walking down Tufnell Park Road and I could hear my footsteps. And I began to do what I suppose Muller had learned to do. I began to meditate on these verses. And as I was walking down the road, I thought, God, who made the world um, and everything in it, everything I'm looking at, even my, uh, my seeing eyes and my beating heart and my hearing ears and all this wonderful stuff around me, God has made this. And it was spring and those were beautiful, beautiful summer days. And it seemed very glorious and very beautiful. Then it said, who is, who is the Lord, who is the master of heaven and earth. It struck me that he is right over all of this, fully in charge, the master of heaven and earth. And he cannot live, this verse says, in temples made by human hands. It seemed wonderful to me that God who fills the heaven and the heaven of heavens, of course he cannot live in temples made with hands. And then it says, how could we give him anything? How could we give him anything when he's in need of nothing? Because he himself has given to Everyone, every single person, all seven billion people of us, he has given to each one of us life. He gave you your life. He gave me my life, breath, this air that we're breathing and everything else, everything else. No wonder the Bible says in him we live and move and have our being. There is nothing outside and beyond him. And these two verses became like incredible spiritual food they brought me great joy and happiness and I would go to work and be caught up with all this stuff it was terribly busy at that time and I would come out and I would think oh what's the verse again and then I'd start again God who made the world and everything in it and it seemed so wonderful and it was as if these these verses magnified God and brought faith to my heart and they became like a living thing to me and that to me was the first time really that something had happened like that um, in, 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 a, in such a direct way related to a Bible verse. So that was just fantastic. And then Nick read me this week a wonderful quote. I'm going to put this up. I'm going to read it out. And it says this really wonderful thing. It was written nearly 350 years ago. It says this, There is as much difference between a truth remembered and a truth meditated as between a cordial in the glass and a cordial drunk down. OK, so cordial is juice or squash or something. It's a drink in a glass. And what he's saying is that when we just remember a verse, it's like being handed a glass of, of juice. But when we start to think about it and um, keep going over it and chew it over in our minds and look at all the different parts of it, it can become like a drink. And I thought this for flame. So if you're in flame, maybe give us a wave. So if you're in flame, can you give us a wave? Brilliant. I'm hoping you're waving. Um, so you learnt uh, a Bible verse, Psalm 121 verse 2. So if I say to you, um, where does my help come from? You hopefully will reply, my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. But if you just remember that and don't 
keep thinking about it and bring it into your mind and maybe think about it last thing at night or think about it when you need help from God, then it's just like having a glass of juice but not drinking it. But if you're willing to think about it and remember it and go over it in your heart and say, oh Jesus, would you show me what this means? Then it will become a wonderful living thing to you and it will be like having a drink rather than just holding one. Thought that was such a great illustration. So finally, Psalm 1, which Tony and Nick um, are going to share a little bit about this morning. When Nick shared that, it said, on, 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 in his word, on this word, these words of God, I will meditate. The, this man meditates day and night. And I was thrilled when I saw that word night. I thought, of course, at night, when we wake up and sometimes we can't get back to sleep, um, as well as praying, which is something we can do, we can also meditate. We can churn over in my, our mind. We can think about this word and it's powerful for us. Uh, and I think that's something Tony and Nick are going to talk about later on this morning.